Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan, a, definitely a top 10 player. Uh, I don't know too much about him, though, I'm being honest. I know, like, the runaround. Like, you know the basic shit. But, like, arguably one of the most, not nah, arguably the most consistent player of all time. I would low-key pick Kareem over him in that category. Because Kareem was also paired with a lot of bad rosters, so it's like a lot of his seasons kind of went, you know, um, under radars. Whereas this dude, he was always on a very good, very wonderful um, organization. Like a good system his entire career. But Tim Duncan's ignore gold case. Before we get started, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Help me get to 420. Wait, I did that. 420. You know what I said? No Mary Joanna, no weed. Dexter. And let's get this vid for Timmy D. Let's get this vid to smooth. Eight likes. Let's get to it. Is it possible for a player who's universally recognized as the greatest ever at his position to also be underrated? I think it's possible, and this man is why. Although Tim Duncan is, is often referred to as the greatest power forward in NBA history, many people fail to realize just how strong his GOAT argument is. Part of this is because Tim was such a quiet and reserved personality. His game was very effective, but it was also fundamentally sound and lacked a lot of the flair and flashiness of other greats. He wasn't one to fill up a highlight reel, but if you looked at his numbers by game's end, you'd see that in reality, he was usually the man who stood out as the best player on the floor. Tim Duncan entered the league as a 21-year-old in the 97-98 season, and he was immediately an all-star and elite force in the league. In his first season, he averaged 21.1 points, 11.9 rebounds, and 2.5 blocks on 55 points. What this remind you of? Who this remind you of? Wimby. But Wimby averaging 3.4 blocks. <laughs> and Tim Duncan is a, a, a top 10. And shooting while playing yeah, all Wimby's about to be a problem. that season. In only his rookie season, he was top 15 in the league in scoring, top 3 in rebounding, top 6 Jesus in block shots, Christ. and top 5 in field goal percentage. He was so impressive in his rookie season that during the 1998 All-Star Weekend, it led Charles Barkley to say, I've seen the future, and he wears number 21. In his sophomore season, Duncan gave us more of the same production-wise, mm. as he averaged 21.7 points, 11.4 rebounds, and 2.5 blocks per game on 49.5% shooting. An interesting thing to factor in for the season for Duncan is the fact that if you exclude the 1950s, the 1998-1999 season was the lowest scoring season in NBA history, as teams were averaging only 91.6 wow. points per game. Let me put that in context a little more. If you compare 1999 to the current NBA, in 99, teams shot about 11 less shots per game, had nearly 15 less possessions per game, and scored nearly 20 less points per game. Wow. My point is that Duncan's numbers were even more impressive than they appear at face value, and if he had played in any other era, he would have had even more points, more rebounds, and more blocks. That year, the twin towers of Tim Duncan and David Robinson led the Spurs to the NBA championship. They were dominant throughout those playoffs and went 15-2 in the postseason. Although both big men played a huge role in winning that championship, it was Duncan who truly dominated the NBA Finals as he averaged 27.4 points, 14 rebounds, 2.2 blocks on 54% shooting. While in his second year, brother, his second year, he's already proven to be successful. Playing a monstrous 45.5 minutes per game over that series. As only a 23-year-old, he had took over the NBA's biggest stage and was a dominant Finals MVP, but even that was just a sample of what he was capable of and what we would see from him later in his career. Oh over the next several years, Duncan would continue to be arguably the best big man in the game as he won back-to-back -back league MVPs in 2002 and 2003. Speaking of which, Duncan's 2003 campaign is still one of the greatest seasons from a single player of NBA history. Seriously. That season, he had monstrous averages of 23.3 points, 12.9 rebounds, and 2.9 blocks on 51.3% shooting. 
Not only was he the league MVP that year while leading his Spurs to 60 wins and the NBA's best record, but he was also first team all defense that year, which would become a theme throughout Duncan's career. All of that pales in comparison to what he did in the NBA Finals that year though. On the NBA's biggest stage, uh, he had one of the greatest double, playoff series in NBA history as he averaged 24.2 points, Crazy. a monstrous 17 rebounds, 5.3 assists, and 5.3 blocks on 44 minutes per game. Crazy. To say he simply dominated that series would be a gigantic understatement. Yes. In the sixth game of that finals, Duncan had one of the greatest single game performances of all time as he scored 21 points, 20 rebounds, 10 assists and wow. 8 blocks. Officially, he was credited with 8 blocks, but this game actually has some controversy tied to it, as it appears two blocks were not credited to Duncan that should have been, which is this one and this one, which appears to be incorrectly credited to David Robinson. If his stat line had been done correctly, he would have had 21, 20, 10. Didn't, didn't um, David Robinson get a quadruple double too? Comment down below. That's a freaking quadruple double. In yeah, the history crazy. of the NBA, yep. only four players have officially recorded a quadruple double, and in each of those games, they did it in the regular season. As well, Chamberlain as did, and they got a quintuple double. Fuck. Concern, Tim Duncan was the fifth player to do it, except he did his in the championship clinching yeah, game. That's... If that is not a goat-like performance, yeah, then I don't know what good. is. That crazy. was certainly the prime of Duncan's career, but his success was far from over. Duncan went on to win a total of five championship rings and three finals MVPs. Yeah. As he currently stands, he's 14th all-time in scoring, 6th all-time in rebounds, and 5th all-time in blocks. Wow. He truly was the model of consistency as he played 19 years in his career and averaged a double-double every single year. Crazy, How many organizations man. would love to have a player who averages a double-double for almost two decades straight? The answer is clearly all of them. In those 19 seasons, Duncan Damn. never, ever missed the playoffs. That is the most seasons by any player to never miss the playoffs. Duncan was also one of the greatest two-way players of NBA history. It didn't matter which side of the court he was on, the big fundamental was always dominating. He was selected for both the All-NBA team and All-Defense team for 13 consecutive Crazy. seasons. He's the only player in NBA history to accomplish that. He has a total of 15 All-NBA selections, which is tied for the most in NBA history. Yeah, don't get it fucked up. Tim Duncan is top 10. <laughs> it could even be argued he's top 5. I wouldn't mind arguments like that. Not at all. He's like 8th for me all time. 8th. I have LeBron over him and Kareem. Yeah. And he also has 15 all defense teams. They're all like in the which same is by far category. the most in NBA history. The closest player to him has three less seasons of elite defense. He has the numbers, the accolades, the championships, and the clutch gene to be a worthy candidate for the greatest player of all time. Yes, he does. But one I of the most say, ignored yeah. aspects of his GOAT resume is his leadership and his overall impact on a franchise. Duncan always had the utmost respect of his fans, his peers, and of the coaching staff. I don't think I don't think that's undermined. I think if, if anything, that's like his most admired um attribute or um characteristic. That's the characteristic everybody mentions personally. Uh, yeah, for sure I would say that. He was never one to cause any drama. He never caused any dissension among the team. And no teammates were ever uncomfortable playing in a Tim Duncan-led system. Even when he was well past his prime, Duncan kept his team relevant and in contention by making numerous sacrifices financially. Several Crazy. times, Duncan took less money from the Spurs in order to give them more cap space to bring in more talent to play alongside him. Not many GOAT candidates were willing to make that sacrifice for the that's, sake of winning. That's some but that's real nigga Duncan shit, did. man. If he doesn't make I'm those financial sacrifices, lie. there's a strong likelihood that they don't win their fifth championship in 2014. Whether it's on the court, on either side of the ball, or if it's his impact off the court that goes beyond the numbers, Tim Duncan <laughs> is one of a kind. This is why Tim Duncan is the greatest player of all time. This Excuse officially me. wraps up my GOAT series. I just want to say thank you guys for watching this series and sharing your thoughts on it. Nah. Yeah. Uh, fuck with you too, Johnny Arnett. You know what I'm saying? I already subscribed. But nah, he's, he's definitely not the GOAT. Yeah, there can be arguments that he's top three. I think those arguments, they're there, but pretty weak. Only because his team. And that has a lot to do with it. 
I mean, they didn't have no prior success before him, though, so I guess that does kind of... But it seems like they were already an established organization. You see what I'm saying? And they were just bringing in a key piece. So it's like when you already have the pieces and you're just missing one piece, to me, in a way that kind of dims your light, to me, just because it's like you weren't a part of the rebuilding process. Me personally, I think that has a lot to do with it. I mean, he was a part, but he, you get what I'm trying to say. Uh, you get what I'm trying to say. But, um, like, you compare him to Kareem personally, like the Lakers organization. It, it, does, it hurts his case because as soon as What's the Face came, Magic came, they got a championship and he was there four years before that. So that is a bad look. But at the same time, he was there for the rebuild. You see what I'm saying? I, I'm low key kind of chatting. But I don't really know how to say it. I don't know how to put it into words. But if you understand what I'm saying, we're right here then. But that's about it.